Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for this hearing, and I thank uh, Rear Admiral Schultz and uh, Vice Admiral Michelle uh, for their presence here today. As uh, the representative from Florida's uh, southernmost district, I have a very special appreciation for the Coast Guard and uh, its mission. Thank you for keeping our people safe uh, and secure. I'm hoping uh, you can address generally uh, this phenomenon we're seeing of uh, drug transit routes uh, shifting to the Caribbean. Uh, have you seen uh, a spike in the past several years, and what impact has this had on your budget? Good afternoon, Congressman, and uh, sir, good to see you, and uh, thanks for your support of the men and women of South. I know you're down there, I think, as recently as April here. That's right. I would say, in terms of the shift to the Caribbean, we have seen a, a shift in, in recent years here. I think, A, that shift is attributable to some of the successes we've had along the Central American Corridor. It, it, it writ large, about 80 percent of the cocaine that comes out of the Indian Ridge destined towards the United States comes through the Central Corridor, the Central American Corridor, some in the Pacific, some in the Western Caribbean. But as we've had successes there, as we've partnered with the Hondurans, their maritime shield, I think the, it's the balloon effect. You know, the squeeze of the balloon in, in that region has pushed some more activity to the, uh, to the Eastern Caribbean route there. So um, we are aware of that. I think at the end of the day, when you're dealing with a finite number of ships, and uh, you know, the Coast Guard currently in this fiscal year has six ships, 6.2 ships committed to the whole Jayadav mission set here. That's across the East Pack and the Caribbean. The Navy has had one ship. So you're taking seven ships on a good day, maybe some partnerships, and you're spreading them around, you know, we put some energy towards, at the Jeff side, we put some energy on that Eastern Caribbean route, but when, you know, you're in the teens percentage-wise versus knowing 80% of it's moving on either side of the Central American Isthmus there, it's sort of a it's sort of decision. But that said, there's a lot of challenges in Puerto Rico with increasing violence. Puerto Rico has a homicide rate five times that of here, the states here, domestically, it's about five per 100,000 people. I think it's 25 per 100,000 there weapons coming in. So we are very in tune with that. The Coast Guard has been working up unified resolve there, and I'll defer to Admiral Michelle for specifics there, but as, as we at the Southern Command are, are working with these new DHS um, Joint Task Force, working with other, other participants there, working with NORTHCOM, because NORTHCOM really, from a geographic combatant commander standpoint, owns the Puerto Rico region, we're looking at how do we bring some energy to that challenge. Politically, that's been a, a very hot area. So we're aware of that. So there's success there and there's challenge there, and we're trying to attenuate that with a finite amount of bandwidth. If I could just add a couple points here. Um, one, one thing we watch very carefully is Venezuela. I, th I think you've seen Venezuela's got some stability issues, and unfortunately the traffickers are exploiting that. So we've seen what Admiral Schultz mentioned there about additional flows coming out of Venezuela, and a lot of those impact the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and the Eastern Caribbean. So we're going to have to watch that very carefully. Uh, also adding on to Admiral Schultz, the stand-up of uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security's new unity of effort, joint task forces, of which uh, Puerto Rico and Southern Florida are all captured within what's called Joint Task Force East, which is actually dual-hatted with our land area commander up in Norfolk. But they bring the entire DHS family together, so CBP, ICE, Coast Guard, the other supporting elements, all in the unity of effort format along the lines of JADF, if you know the way that they work where they truly have a unified chain of command. This is not a uh, sort of uh, coordination element. This is real right. command and control from the Department of Homeland Security, and we're looking for great things from them along those vectors stretching into Puerto Rico and also uh, South Florida. We're also watching the Cuba situation like we always do. Right now, the Cuban government is pretty good uh, counter drug, but we're going to have to see if that changes over time. But we watch that very carefully, sir. Since you mentioned Cuba and uh, uh, with the chairman's dispensation, because it doesn't have to do specifically with drug trafficking, but we have seen a spike uh, in uh, uh, a migrant movement uh, from Cuba to the United States. Do you attribute that to something specifically? And uh, do you feel that you're prepared at this time for a potential mass migration event? We did see a, a spike here at the end of last year and into the beginning of this year. And when we interviewed the migrants, they said we heard that the uh, wet foot, dry foot policy was going to be changing, so we want to make sure we got there. We've had a public relations campaign out there telling people that, that that is not true and making sure that they understand where the facts are. And here over the summer, I think it's been relatively stable within kind of historic norms. And we're, as always, we're ready for a mass migration, sir, and we watch that all the time. We watch very carefully indicators and warnings both there and also in Haiti, Dominican Republic, and those vectors where we've got some issues percolating. So we watch that very carefully, but we are ready with our 
Homeland Security Task Force Southeast, which is specifically designed to deal with these mass migration events. Thank you both. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.